Welcome to On the Kitchen Table, dismantling a large Stuart Twin Victoria steam plant. I assembled this very high quality steam plant for a customer quite a while ago. The boiler is a Stuart Models HB6, 6 inches in diameter and very high quality. It's absolutely beautifully made. This large steam plant has some really nice features, one of them being this beautiful water tank, made by a man in Australia and I'm pretty sure he's not with us anymore. He used to trade under the name Steam Demon. And the main part of the plant of course is the steam engine. This is a twin Victoria and it's very well made. Here's the plant in steam on the kitchen table. This was taken from a video I made a while ago. The video was called a twin Victoria plant in steam. This plant also has a Southworth Engines duplex water pump. This pump was built by a friend of mine, the late Bernard Walker. The customer for whom I assembled this plant has two young sons, so it never did a lot of steaming. They used to run it on compressed air, and the pump's steam cylinders probably never got any lubrication, so I'm going to change the rings and see what happens. If it's not that, it's a breach in the gasket on the steam chest. I will be making a video when I fix the pump, but I think I'll do that in the workshop. How do I get away with having steam engines on the kitchen table? Well, the answer to that's very simple. It's a really big kitchen table. Not particularly good quality, and it was a bit distressed when I bought it. But not as distressed as I was while I was living with my second wife. Now I live by myself, and I like it. 68 years old and single again. It's pretty good. Time now to dismantle this plant. Why am I dismantling the plant? Well, I will explain as I go along. The first thing to do is to remove the exhaust flanges. On the end of each of the exhaust outlets, I silver soldered a PM Research fitting. This fitting is threaded and you can see the corresponding thread on the exhaust pipe. And with the help of another PM Research 90 degree elbow, the exhaust pipe enters a condenser oil trap. When I built this condenser oil trap, I made it in such a way so that the exhaust pipe can be folded backwards like this, less chance of catching it on anything. This is the main steam feed to the engine, held by one union nut onto a globe valve. All of the live steam piping that gets very hot on this plant is lagged using string. The mahogany base of the twin Victoria is screwed to the main base using some very long screws and I'm now removing them from underneath as you can see. The job got a little bit precarious the further I had to move the engine out but luckily I held it using my knee. And in no time at all I could remove the engine off the main baseboard. This baseboard was originally a very light wood that showed every water stain in the world. I painted it black shortly after I bought it back from the owner. To be perfectly honest, I've never liked the physical size of it. This was not my idea. The wooden base is 80 centimeters by 36 centimeters, and the plant weighs in at a whopping 30 kilograms. Time now to remove the condenser oil trap. Really, I should refer to these things as oil traps because they don't do a lot in the way of condensing like a condenser on a full-size steam engine does. But the good thing is that the condensation that takes place within the condenser traps the oil and stops it being blown up the chimney. On a gas-fired boiler, if the exhaust pipe went into the chimney without an oil trap, then the oil would run down into the centre flue and make a noise very much like the sound you get when they're frying fish in a fish and chip shop. Oil traps are essential also in model boats because if you don't use one, then very soon the lake that you're sailing your model steamboat on gets covered in a nice rainbow effect of oil. I'm trying to clean the baseboard as I go because it's very dusty. My workshop has a concrete floor and I don't think there's a lot of cement in the concrete. Occasionally if my compressor's airline comes loose, the resultant blast of air onto the floor makes the workshop very dusty. And as this engine has spent most of its time in the workshop, that's why it's so dusty. Miniature steam engines and steam plants fall into a multitude of different categories. This one, for instance, is not super scale because it uses commercial fittings with large overscale nuts. I have a lot of respect and admire the craft of model engineers who make super scale engines. In my case, I'm not that good a model engineer to make super scale engines anyway, and I prefer the convenience 
of using commercially available fittings. As you can see, the engine is coming apart without many problems. Imagine if each of these connections had six 10BA bolts or smaller. Uh, no, I don't think so. Once I watched the amazing Mr. John Holroyd at the steam workshop working on a 9F steam locomotive, and this was in 5-inch gauge and had scale fittings throughout. I really did admire his patience as he unbolted all these tiny little bolts one at a time. Most of the union nuts on this engine are 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. They are very easy to manipulate and simple to connect and disconnect. Half a turn with the spanner, followed by removing the nut with your fingers, is usually the way it goes. I almost forgot the water inlet pipe on this engine. It's quite a long piece of copper pipe, and I remember pushing a long piece of silicone rubber tubing onto the pipe. The other end of this silicone rubber tubing connected to the water tower. Now you see it, now you don't. The pump is sat on the table and not on the baseboard. This always bothered me. The Stuart HB6 boiler can move from side to side. I never thought to tighten the bolts that hold the banding in place underneath. This is how it was delivered to me in a box from Stuart Models. The next thing to go is this gas tank which is worse than useless. I modified it so I could connect an external gas supply. A small tank like this just freezes up in no time because this is quite a powerful burner. It has a number 15 jet in it. But the boiler raises steam and maintains pressure quite well once I connect a pipe from a commercial gas canister to the fitting I made on the tank. Things like the water tank and the gas tank were fitted to the hardwood base by using 5BA bolts threaded into the wood. This is a throwback to my days of building model aircraft and it works very well. After cutting the thread in the baseboard using a normal tap, if you want to harden the thread, use some very thin super glue in the hole. Make sure it is fully set though before you fix the bolt in place. This clip shows the steam turret on the top of the boiler. I never really liked the horizontal pressure gauge, I'm going to modify this. The tap on the top is to admit compressed air, and the other part is the whistle, and in the foreground is the tap that supplies steam to the engines. Mounted at the top of the water tank is a valve, and this is the water bypass valve from the steam pump. It's not really required, but it allows you to run the steam pump without it filling the boiler. Although, as I mentioned earlier, the steam pump is not working properly, it will not fill the boiler. When I close the water bypass valve, the pump stalls. This is the inlet check valve from the water pump. And if you look closely around the aluminium washers, both on the top of the fitting and where it goes into the boiler, you can actually see a little bit of cathodic corrosion. I do not like aluminium washers, normally I use copper ones. But Stuart have always used aluminium washers, and I've had quite a few problems with them over the years, but usually on old stuff. This is the water outlet to the boiler from the hand pump. The outlet thread on the hand pump is 3 8 by 32. I used an adapter union to fit a piece of 3 16 pipe. And here's where the pipe from the pump goes, into the second water outlet on this beautiful brass tank. Because these pipes are fitted with some silicone rubber tubing, it's surprisingly difficult to rotate the nut to get it off the thread on the tank. It's just the physical friction of the nut against the silicone rubber tube. I used two pieces of copper so I could thread the silicone rubber tube all the way on. And because of that, there's a very flexible part of the joint right in the middle. I'll speed up this next bit just to save some time. I'm removing the 5BA countersunk brass bolts that hold the water tank onto the baseboard. And again, the baseboard is threaded. And once again, you can see that the baseboard is really dusty. I like to have models in glass cases where possible. But a glass case for this would really make it look big and clumsy. Time now to remove the water pump. These are 6BA bolts, but unfortunately my 6BA spanners are in the workshop, so I use my Barco. Good for everything, usually. Keyboard warriors and armchair critics, please do not write in. I am aware that this is the wrong size bit, but it removes the screws, which is the main thing. One more part out of the way, and now it's time to remove the boiler. That was held to the baseboard with four 2BA countersunk bolts with nuts on the end. 
Now all I'm left with is the baseboard. What am I going to do with that? Well, I had thought about sawing it in half and having the boiler and the pump on one half just as a boiler plant because this HB6 boiler is so completely over the top for something like a Stuart Victoria. Maybe it would be a good idea to use it to supply steam for the Stuart triple expansion engine that I'm rebuilding. I'm not sure yet, I will give it some thought. I'm going to put the boiler and the water pump back together on the bench because that's one thing that I need to do first, make the water pump pump water into the boiler against steam pressure. And that is it for this on the kitchen table video, I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always I'd just like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.